What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We're going to be talking about Scream 7. We're going to be talking about Terrifier 3. We're going to talk about Jennifer's body. And then the last thing we'll talk about is horrific in its own right. We're going to be talking about another WWE update related to Vince McMahon. So starting off here with Scream 7, Hayden Pantier recently called the firing of Melissa Barrera from Scream 7 very unfair and upsetting. Now, she was speaking with The Messenger, I believe, when discussing this. She says, you know, a lot of people hadn't really asked her how she felt. Melissa is such a badass as a human being and as an actress. She was hurt by it, but I think she took it in stride and was very, very gracious about it. So it's nice to see Hayden addressing and revealing something I tried to say was likely happening. A few people may have spoken to Melissa in private because not everything has to be a public display. Not everybody does that when it comes to showing support to people about certain things, especially when there's a lot of missing context for those of us on the outside looking in. And Melissa still hasn't explicitly gone over what happened, of course, in, in relation to what exactly and how the firing went down, which I never expect her to do. But she probably would like to also be the one to start speaking on it in some capacity first, like she has started doing before her co-stars do, because it's ultimately still, again, her firing. It's not the co-stars firing. So maybe in Melissa's mind, let her talk about it first. Then you guys can start talking about it versus you talking about it first the firing had nothing to do with you and all of a sudden the media makes it about you when you weren't the one who got fired so i like that hayden spoke up but the other thing we need to touch on is scream 7 could already have a new director too but who could it be so i've heard they have a director all i can say is i don't know who it is but if it's not eli roth my hunch is it's probably a woman eli roth isn't my preferred choice but it wouldn't be shocking and if it's a woman, I am going to go out on a wild guess and say that it's someone connected to a very popular film from 2009. That's my wild guess. <laughs> so diving into Terrifier 3, Chris Jericho went over his role in Terrifier 3 when speaking with MovieWeb a few days ago. He said, I have seen the script. I have already kind of done the filming or the filming that they do when they're taking molds of your face and all of this sort of thing. So suffice to say, I don't have a good, well, I don't have, or I don't last very long, but it's gonna be great. If you love Terrifier 2, you're gonna love Terrifier 3 because it's even better. It ups the ante even more. Now we knew Chris would be back based off of what we already knew from previous reports about the returning stars. But now based off of this, it's more or less clear He's dying early on since it also was teased. Terrifier 3's opening is pretty over the top, but it's also been kind of pointed out that it might just be picking up in the hospital off of the ending of Terrifier 2. So just a small update on Jericho's return and his more than apparent death. Although with him saying he doesn't last very long. You know, it's a horror film. It's easy to just jump right to he's dying, but he could be lasting shorter in another capacity. Maybe he doesn't die and he's just taken out of the fight and actually lives, but we just don't see him die. Best guess is he's dying. But was anyone really looking forward to Terrifier 3 for solely seeing Chris Jericho? No, it's all about Sienna. It's all about Lauren Lavera. It's all about the rematch between Art the Clown and Sienna. No one cares about Chris Jericho. No disrespect. I am a fan of Chris Jericho's in-ring work, but I know I wasn't looking forward to seeing him back. But I'm sure a lot of you weren't either. Again, because it's all about the rematch between Art the Clown and Sienna. So what do you think about Chris Jericho dying early? Do you care? Do you not care? Why or why not? We're going to touch on Jennifer's body. So the Jennifer's body writer admitted to not being done with the universe when chatting with the boo crew podcast they said yes i want to do a sequel uh i am not done with jennifer's body i just need to find i need to partner with people who believe in it as much as i do and that hasn't really happened yet i need someone to believe in it who has a billion dollars so of course this isn't an announcement about jennifer's body too by any means but perhaps a sequel could manifest down the road because it's nice to know that the writer is actually from what, I, from what i'm gathering keeping that in the back of their mind that they want to revisit jennifer's body they have i would assume thoughts ideas on where to take a sequel now my own experience with jennifer's body was 
back in 2009, I was going through my Megan Fox phase. After Transformers in 2007, as I'm sure a lot of you listening to were going through a Megan Fox phase too, if you grew up in the 2000s. Jennifer's body was just something I checked out simply for Megan. And it was a good time. It was good for what it was at the time too. And it's very much so still holding up all these years later. Do I think it's some majorly impressively tremendous horror film no but when i look back on a lot of the trash that came out in the 2000s jennifer's body is not six feet deep like a lot of the other train wrecks that came out in the 2000s a sequel does seem rather unnecessary but i could also argue that with a lot of the horror franchises that i love like halloween friday the 13th nightmare on elm street scream scream especially with a conclusive ending like you get in the original but We'll see if Jennifer's Body 2 ever comes to fruition. The last thing we're going to talk about here is Vince McMahon in WWE. So Vince McMahon has another round of essay accusations with a lawsuit, text messages, and graphic details included. Brock Lesnar was also implicated in this, but no word from Lesnar's camp just yet. But some people have speculated that this explains why he returned in 2021 if this was involved in the reasoning. Uh, if you want to learn all the details, go look up the court case because I'm not going over this graphic content. TKO released this statement. Mr. McMahon does not control TKO, nor does he oversee the day-to-day -day operations of WWE. While the matter predates our TKO executive team's tenure at the company, we take Mrs. Grant's horrific allegations very seriously and are addressing this matter internally. McMahon's camp also gave a statement basically saying these are lies and he intends to fight it, but this man is just absolutely unreal, guys. He doesn't even oversee the day-to-day -day operations, and he's still causing problems for Paul and his team and everybody who's trying to put on a good show. All I can say is get him out. I'm not wishing death on him, but remember when CM Punk said maybe it'd be better once he's dead? Perhaps he was right. And again, that's not me wishing death on him. It's just I struggle to see why Punk's statements won't end up being true someday when Vince McMahon does leave us. I struggle to see how the company won't be better off with everything that keeps coming out about this individual he has to go i hope it's soon i hope tko can get him out and i hope he no longer continues to be a stain for the company but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video